This film will illustrate a piston replacement for a Burmeister and Wayne K90 GF type engine, but the basic procedure shown also applies to the smaller engines of type K80 GF and K67 GF. However, in one important point, the hydraulic tightening pressure, the statements in the film may differ from the data supplied with your particular engine. You should therefore note that the hydraulic tightening pressure for the tightening procedures can vary from plant to plant, and the correct pressures are always stated on the data sheet for the individual plant in question. Before beginning the overhaul, we recommend that the procedure be gone through and the tools checked. In order to prevent injuries to personnel or damage to the machinery, it is very important that the following precautions are taken before any work is commenced. To safeguard against unintentional turning of the engine, the main stop valve must be closed, that is, turned to the blocked position, and the stopcock closed on the inlet pipe to the starting air distributor. In addition, the turning gear should be engaged. This will also prevent the engine from being unintentionally turned by, for example, stray wakes or waves activating the propeller. The next stage is to remove the cap nuts with copper discs on all indicator cocks and open the cocks. Having done this, the cooling water outlet valve is closed and the vent cock is opened for the cylinder cover that is to be removed. In addition, the cooling water inlet valve should also be closed for the cylinder block in question. The cylinder block drain valve is then opened and the cooling water is drained off from the cylinder cover. The fuel pump oil inlet valve is now closed and then the cooling water outlet pipe is removed from the exhaust valve housing. The exhaust bend can be disconnected by removing the two hinged clamping rings. Be sure that the oil pump for the camshaft lubricating system is stopped before the exhaust valve activation pipe is removed. It is important that special care be taken to ensure that the sealing surfaces of the pipe are not damaged. Also take special care when handling the high pressure fuel oil pipe. Here again, the sealing surfaces are vulnerable to blows and knocks. The control air connection to the starting valve is now removed and so are the nuts for the starting air flange connection on the cylinder cover.
On the latest BMW engine types, all cylinder cover nuts can be loosened and tightened simultaneously by means of a hydraulic jack system. The system is first vented by opening and closing the little vent screw. The oil pressure is then raised to the value stated on the data sheet. In this case, 700 kilopond per square centimeter. And the circular nuts on the cylinder cover are loosened by means of a Tommy bar. After slackening back the nuts by two or three turns, the hydraulic system is relieved of pressure and all the cover nuts can then be removed by hand. When lifting the cover, we strongly recommend the use of the special tools supplied. The employment of other lifting devices can cause damage and delay. To prevent damaging the cooling water connections, the cover is landed on wooden blocks. Having now dealt with the cover, we can concentrate on the removal of the piston assembly. The spacer ring and hydraulic jack for the piston rod nuts are handed into the crankcase. The inner row of nuts on the stuffing box flange are then taken off. After removal of the locking strap, the spacer ring is placed around the piston rod nut. After mounting the hydraulic jack, it is checked that there is play between the jack cylinder and piston as stated on the data sheet. The high pressure pump can now be connected to the jack and the pressure raised to the value stated on the data sheet. In this case, 700 kilopond per square centimeter. At this pressure, the piston rod nut can be loosened by means of a Tommy bar. The hydraulic pressure is then released and the jack and spacer ring are removed and the piston rod nut is now able to be screwed off. To protect the piston rod threads, a cap nut is screwed onto the thread for the hydraulic jack. On the latest BMW engines, the piston crown has a special groove for the lifting tool. This groove must be carefully cleaned before the tool is mounted. Before lifting, be sure that the lifting tool screws are screwed completely home.
they are correctly positioned when the screw heads are seen to abut against the guide straps. When the piston is lifted, the stuffing box will also be pulled up by the end of the piston rod. No special lifting tool is required. The piston assembly is landed on a support placed on the engine platform. A protective cover is placed over the stuffing box aperture to prevent contamination of the crankcase. Before moving the spare piston assembly, a protective nut is screwed onto the piston rod end. A pulling tool is then mounted on each side of the piston rod and also attached to the stuffing box. The cover is then removed from the stuffing box aperture and the lifting tool is mounted on the spare piston. The running surfaces of piston and cylinder liner are smeared with lubricating oil. A guide ring which guides the piston rings into the liner is placed on top of the cylinder liner. The piston can now be carefully lowered into the cylinder liner. During the lowering, the piston is turned so that the dowel pins in the piston rod end enter the matching bores in the crosshead. The lowering is continued until the lifting tool with the piston rests on the guide ring. At this point, the stuffing box will still be some 10 to 15 millimetres above its final position in the scavenging air box. The pulling tool can now be removed and the stuffing box is pulled home by tightening the screws. The next step is to re-tighten the piston rod nut. The crosshead is turned to a convenient position and the hydraulic jack mounted as shown earlier. By means of a feeler gauge, the piston rod nut is checked to see that it is resting correctly against the crosshead. The hydraulic pressure can now be raised to the specified value, which in this case is 700 kilopund per square centimetre. The piston rod nut is tightened by hand and the pressure is relieved. The jack is then removed and the locking strap for the piston rod nut 
is mounted and secured. To facilitate good running in, we recommend that the piston rod is smeared with molybdenum disulfide. Before mounting the cover, it is of special importance that the joint faces be thoroughly cleaned. All cooling water connections are provided with new rubber rings and the rings are smeared with a little grease or Vaseline. The cover is carefully lowered into position and the cover nuts are screwed onto the studs. It is important to remember that the outer circular nuts must be slackened a little so that they are free of the hydraulic ring. When the correct tightening pressure has been reached in accordance with the data sheet, all the circular nuts are screwed home by hand and tightened with a Tommy bar. On release of the pressure, all the connections will be correctly tensioned. After mounting the various pipes, water connections and exhaust bend, the engine is prepared for starting and run for 10 to 15 minutes at 50 to 60 revolutions. After a piston replacement, we recommend that the cylinder lubricator feed rate be increased by approximately 50% during the first two to three running hours. The engine is now stopped, the main stop valve closed and the turning gear engaged. The piston rod and stuffing box can now be felt over and checked visually. If everything is found to be in order, the engine is ready for normal running.